Hi folks, this is Andrew Roop, agronomist with Golden Harvest covering the state of Wisconsin. I'm here today in a cornfield that last week was one of the victims of some of the severe storms that we had had roll through the state. In this field we've got some pretty significant goosenecking in some areas and we're here to try to determine what the root cause of the, the, the damage was. When we look at a field that uh, went down prior to pollination, one of the, the big things that we can um, be comfortable with is that we should see pretty significant goosenecking and, and allow that plant to come back upright um, and allow it to, to reach back towards a, a more vertical position. We, we see that whenever it's prior to pollination because the plant hasn't yet lignified its stock and, and we're still a little bit pliable in its stock and it allows it to upright itself. And in this situation, we were further enough out from pollination where we still should get pretty good um, pollen drop down to our silks and get um, adequate pollination on the ears. So we're here and we're, we're gonna try to determine what the potential cause of the root, lo root lodging was. Um, one of the things we could consider is the, the hybrid's genetics. Some hybrids vary in the, the amount of root mass that they'll produce. Um, generally hybrids with, with a uh, larger root mass will have a stronger base to the plant. However, some hybrids will fully develop their root mass at different times. Some hybrids will be more fully developed prior to, to tasseling and to pollination, whereas other hybrids may take a little bit longer to, to fully develop their roots. And they can even be out as far as R2 before they fully develop their, their root structure. Another potential cause of the root lodging could be soil compaction. So that compaction could be uh, horizontal to the to the to the plants um, where there was a tillage pass and we actually didn't quite uh, break up the soil the soil particles and we actually created a little thin compaction layer um, beneath the soil surface in that case we'll dig the roots and we a lot of times we may see roots running parallel for a ways until they until they find a, an opening or a crack or a, a pore space where it can dive back down deeper into the soil. And we also could see compaction that goes along with the rows, sidewall compaction. Whenever we see sidewall compaction, the roots aren't able to move out laterally enough and, and also uh, establish a, a wide base to, to resist itself from, from tipping over in the wind. Um, a third potential cause would be insects specifically corn rootworm, whether that's western corn rootworm or northern corn rootworm. Um, whenever, we, whenever we think about potentially having rootworm issues, we want to think about first, what's the field history? Has it been continuous corn for many, many years where that uh, corn rootworm population has built up enough of a population to feed aggressively on the roots and, and not provide the plant with the stability it needs? Uh, we also want to think about what the trait package is on the product that we placed. Is it Does it contain multiple modes of action, a single mode of action, or no modes of action? Um, multiple modes of action will be our best, our best option to combat these pests. Whether it's our, our Agrisure RW coupled with Herculex rootworm, or it's our Agrisure RW coupled with Duracade that those two products both provide multiple modes of action below ground. And, uh, and as we, we think about uh, insect resistance management, do we also, did we also have an, a soil insecticide that was used on the crop at planting? Uh, is that another, another tool in our tool belt that we need to combat these corn rootworm pests? What we're gonna do within Within this field is, first thing I like to do whenever I see some down corn is to do a pull test, um, even without a shovel. Are we able to pull the plants out of the ground just using our own force, or is a shovel needed to lodge the plants from the ground? In this field, we've got one plant here, 
and I'm actually able to pull it straight from the ground without actually even using a shovel. Um, I also like to use a shovel though in case of to test the soil for compaction. Um, so we can use the shovel, we can sink, sink the shovel in the ground and see what kind of resistance we have on that shovel. Is it, does it take both feet to drive the shovel in the ground or can we just drive it nice and smooth six to eight inches down with the, with the shovel? So a shovel is also a helpful tool, but in this case, I was able to dislodge the plants from the ground simply by using just my arm, just my hands. And in this field, what we're going to do, break the top of the plant off and shake some of this dirt off. We're going to break as much of the dirt off as we can out in the field and see if we can see any damage. Another, another good way of getting the, the dirt off to really get a good look at the roots is just getting a hose and collecting some roots and heading up and washing these off to, to see what kind of uh, root structure we have in the field and whether or not there actually was uh, rootworm damage in the field. So in this particular case, I'm seeing pretty aggressive feeding on some of these roots. And what we're actually looking for is some of these frayed roots and and these frayed roots are usually brown tan a little bit discolored they're not that healthy white color of our roots that that um that we desire to see whenever it's this tan and brown color and there's a little bit frayed in it to the look to it that's a pretty good indication of some corn rootworm damage and if we were to wash these off I think we would see pretty excessive damage on these roots here. I typically try to look at what the, the, the first node that's fully submerged into the soil looks like. Um, that'd be your brace roots are on top and then what that next node looks like. Usually that's the, the node that is aggressively fed on by corn rootworms. One thing I would highly recommend is if you do think you have a, a potential genetic issue or a corn rootworm issue or any other issue with the, the root structure in your plants, reach out to a, a Golden Harvest Seed Advisor, sales rep or agronomist to, uh, to help you evaluate what's going on in your fields. With that, this is Andrew Roop signing off.